In this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of partial fractions. Now, partial fractions is in the IB Maths Analysis and Approaches HL course, and a lot of students ask me, well, what topic is partial fractions in? Is it in topic one, number and algebra? Is it in topic two, functions? Or is it in topic five, calculus? Well, it's kind of in all of those topics. It's a skill that we need to be able to uh, understand. And what we are doing is we're essentially simplifying a rational function into the sum of two fractions or, or, or the sum of two partial fractions. And that will help us when we get to calculus and we get to integration, it'll help us integrate whatever rational function that we have. So it's kind of in all of the topics, uh, but the skill you will learn uh, well before you get to the integration chapter. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to look at our rational function. We have two here, two examples. And the goal here is to decompose uh, our function into the sum of partial fractions. So what we can do is just skip to the answer here. And as you can see, this is going to be equal to, and it's the sum of two partial fractions. And therefore, if we wanted to ever integrate this, we could just therefore integrate this right-hand side, which would be a lot easier when we get to uh, calculus. Okay, so let's go through the steps. If we have uh, something that looks like this, maybe 11x plus 41 over this quadratic looking um, term down the bottom here. Step one is to factorize the denominator if we can. Now, as we uh, hopefully by now know how to factorize a quadratic, what we should hopefully see is that this quadratic becomes x plus three multiplied by x plus five. So step one, if we have a quadratic on the denominator is to factorize. Now, step two is we want to write a sum of partial fractions with the factors as our denominators and the numerators are unknown for now. So what I mean by that is let's rewrite what we, what we have and let's make this equal to, and we have our unknown numerators. I'm just going to call them capital A and capital B for now. But the, uh, the factors that we found in, part, in the first part, in the first step, they will be our denominators. Okay, now from here, what we want to do is get an equation. We want something on the left-hand side to equal something on the right-hand side. Now, on the left-hand side, we have this 11x plus 41 as our numerator, but our denominator is this quadratic, x squared plus 8x plus 15. So what we want to do is say, well, if we did multiply top and bottom of this fraction by x plus 5, Therefore, this would be a times x plus 5 over x plus 3 times x plus 5. We know that this x plus 3 times x plus 5 is this. So therefore, we can say, well, 11x plus 41, which is the numerator of this fraction, can be equal to a times x plus 5 plus and it's the opposite here. It would be b times x plus 3, such that x plus 3 times x plus three on the numerator and the denominator would give us the quadratic on the denominator, which was the left-hand side. So the goal is to get from this step to this step here, one equation with just our numerators, and it's 11x plus 41 will equal a times whatever this term is here, x plus five plus b times whatever this term is here. Okay, so that's mathematically correct. Now, if we have an equation in this form here, a nice technique to solve for what A and B are is to recognize, well, what does X need to be such that this would all be zero? And therefore we can cancel out the A. And X would need to be equal to negative five. So what we can do is we can recognize that and substitute in X equals negative five into our equation. And therefore we would get 11 times negative five plus 41 will equal a times, and this would be negative five plus five, which is zero. And that was the goal to get rid of the A. But then we would have plus B times negative five plus three. Okay, so from here, the left-hand side, 41, and then we have minus 55 is negative 14. The right-hand side, this would just be zero A, which we don't need to put, uh, but there we ha therefore we have negative two times B. And if negative 14 equals negative two times B, we can solve for B b equals seven. And then what we can do is substitute in x to be equal to negative three back in this step to do the same process to eliminate the b and solve for a. Okay, so 11 times negative three plus 41, I will equal a times negative three plus five plus b times negative three plus three 
the Bs will be eliminated because this will be zero. And therefore we are just left with negative 33 plus 41, which is eight. And this will equal, and this will be two A. And therefore we have A to be equal to four. Okay, so what we can finally now conclude is that this here will be equal to A, which we know is four, over x plus three plus seven over x plus five. Okay, so once again, in conclusion, this here is much easier uh, to integrate than the left-hand side, which will be very helpful when we get to some integration questions. Okay, our second example here is a little bit different. They've told us that we have 10x plus eight over two x plus one, and we want to uh, write this as the sum of partial fractions in this form here, a plus b over two x plus one. So sometimes they ask, or they do give us the form that they want the answer in. Okay, so what we can do here is a very similar technique to the first example. We can say, well, let's look at our numerator, 10x plus eight, let's make this equal to, and if we wanted 2x plus one to be the, the denominator of both of these, such that we can make this numerator equal to the right-hand side, this A would need to multiply by 2x plus one on the numerator and the denominator. Therefore, A times 2x plus one would be over 2x plus one. We can combine our, our fractions here with our common denominator, and therefore we would just have B on the numerator. Okay, at this step here, what we can do is expand everything. and We will have 10x plus eight is equal to two times A times X. Then we have plus uh, a times one plus b. And this is a step here that we can recognize, well, let's compare the coefficients of the left-hand side to the right-hand side. The coefficient of x on the left-hand side is 10, and the coefficient of x on the right-hand side is just simply 2a, so 10 must equal 2a. And therefore we can solve for a, a is equal to five. And if we compare the constants on the left-hand side to the right-hand side, we would just simply have eight, is equal to a plus b. So therefore, if eight is equal to a plus b, and we know that a is five, b must be three. So therefore, uh, we have 10x plus eight over two x plus one uh, simply being equal to uh, a, which is our five plus b, which was three over two x plus one. Okay, so these are just two uh, examples here. I do recommend uh, that you practice maybe a few more out of your textbook, uh, but the goal of this concept, the partial fractions, is to take some rational function and if we can simplify it into being the sum of two partial fractions, uh, what we can do, uh, actually it doesn't need to be two, it can be more than two, but most of the questions you'll get will be two. Uh, it'll be a lot easier for us to integrate in some more challenging calculus questions. Okay, good luck.